as an investor, it's very clear. It's office suites, right? So any future injections, it's on the office. So we have a lot of room to putting in new office buildings. No? So we, we won't be mixing it with other asset classes or asset types because that kind of, I think in the long run, that the product, the REIT more volatile. We are, we've earmarked um, the proceeds for 21 projects, oh. 15 of which are going to be uh, new uh, BPO office buildings, which we are planning to build in places like Pampanga, mm -hmm. uh, Bacolod, Davao. Uh, the objective of the group is to eventually put in, you know, all the assets into MRE. Whoa. Uh, and, you know, or a significant uh, portion of it, right? And to our goal is to be the largest uh, office street in Southeast Asia. You were talking about 85 buildings um, as part of, uh, or 85 uh, tenants as part of the, the REIT. Um, in terms of percentage and occupancy, um, what does it account for? Yeah, we are currently already around uh, hovering around uh, 90 95 percent occupied, mm -hmm. uh, leased out. Um, that's already also already considering that certain clients, um, you know, some clients sometimes during the height of pandemic, you know, because uh, they didn't need so much space, so they would we would rationalize spaces already, you know, uh, because our normal rate, a uh, normal S uh, occupancy rate before the pandemic was around 98 to 100 percent um so 95 for us is actually regular relatively um uh it's already on the lower lower low side now. so um we definitely do expect though uh by the time we list that we will get back to the 98 percent because uh quite a lot of our new um uh contracts are coming uh, uh, within the last quarter of this year, uh, hence the optimism no, um, in the sector and in the in the assets that we're putting into the REIT. For those who are watching this and want to use like a benchmark for this, is there a healthy level that they could say that okay, this is a very very good uh, occupancy rate also, yeah. uh, at least for the benefit yeah. of potential REIT investors as well? Well, the industry now uh, was is around eighty nine percent, no. Um, so and you know you're you're tend to, you tend to be you're lucky if you get to the ninety percent level. Uh, we have always been, as a, a modesty aside, I think Megawell has always been a bit better than the industry in terms of occupancy. Again, simply because if you were to choose a building that was in the middle of nowhere, I mean not the middle of nowhere, in the middle of somewhere, but effectively on your own. Uh, where the ecosystem around you is not within your control, so connectivity and all that is not really exactly optimal. Versus locating in a place that is, you know, well populated. There's good housing options. There's loads and loads of amenities. Your employees are extremely happy here. I mean, if you were to choose, if you were, if you had two spaces that were empty and vacant and you were a client and you wanted to choose between the two, you totally want to gravitate towards the second type, right? With the, or within our townships. No? And that's the proposition that we always um, have for our clients is that you do not actually just rent a building. You're actually renting an entire, or you're, you're coming into an entire ecosystem uh, filled with fun choices, I guess, no? And amenities and essentials, no, and that I think is really the biggest um, selling point, no, and biggest advantage to being uh, in a mega world uh, township or mega world building, and that's why uh, throughout the uh, throughout the man, you know, various years and various quarters, we've always performed better than 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 what is the average occupancy rate uh, in other uh, areas. Above average occupancy rate um, BPOs. Among those, that do you have like a figure on your average lease, um, the average tenant lease? Uh, how many years are they uh, locked in? Our average right now is around 
you know, when you uh, for the M rate itself, it's around 4.7 years, no? So almost five years. That's the mm-hmm. average lease expiry date for the whole portfolio. But if you look at our contractual um, uh, uh, terms, they're anywhere from five years to even up to 10 years. Because some of our clients, um, they take entire buildings or they take the equivalent of entire buildings and spread it out into different buildings, but they have like, you know, if you add it up, it's like one, they're like occupying one building. So that makes it, um, uh, that's why they, they tend to take a longer uh, lease term. And that creates stability, to be honest. No, That's, that's, a, that's the kind of stability you're looking for as well. Uh, when you're looking for a REIT, no? or that, 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 that's the kind of stability you want when you when you invest in a REIT, or that's the kind of stability that, that M REIT provides. Yeah. I think there's a big chance that the BPO is sort of immune to this, but um, from an office space level, I'm curious about how work from home and how this pandemic um, has sort of also evolved the office space industry because uh, you you mentioned it earlier that there were some offices that tried to uh, make, make their rental space smaller. Um, I guess my question is, uh, where do you see the office space um, industry over the next few years, given that uh, there will still be some businesses that will will opt to be um, working from home as well? I think the work from home is uh, temporary. Um, it's definitely, you know, I mean, for for multinationals, maybe it's it becomes a more relevant way of operating no maybe but again it's not as it's not optimal um there's a lot of things that are lost obviously when you when you do work from home uh, productivity etc but in a bpo setting i think that's even more difficult no? um you know the first and foremost um this is a high you know high service level type of uh, you know uh, industry no there are you know high productivity as well you know um and when you do when you might you when you do this in a work from home status it's very difficult to be productive because sometimes you know a lot of homes or asian homes um and generally philippine homes are rather small you know um add to that that it's very unique in the philippines that you have the situation where you have multiple families or multiple inhabitants in our case you know we have one condo some condo units are being lived on by by being inhabited by many people no? <laughs> two or three people you know and then of course children aren't allowed to get out of the house so you have that factor as well it's very difficult to be you know to have that quiet space right or to seclude yourself and to really do the bpo the work you're supposed to do for bpo so, so i think in that respect um i think productivity suffers no and of course clients will always you know will always audit that and say, hey, that, that might not be the right way to service, the, you know, to service us. We expect more. No? So that, in that respect, that's that's one factor. No? Of course, another factor is data privacy. No? Of course, um, you know, you have, you know, if you, especially for financial institutions, uh, etc. when you, you know, when you have client information in terminals that are outside the office, that is always a big risk as well, right? Um, and, and and of course you know then and, and, and of course there's a whole other slew of, of challenges no um, you know when there is uh, a calamity or you know lack in you know, and then the most obvious of course is you know the the, the 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 obvious difference in internet connection or internet bandwidth from the residential area and and even in the in the corporate area or office areas so that's that's those are some of the problems that we have uh, seen uh, but and that's why Although some of the BPOs have successfully migrated some of the work uh, to to homes, but that they just did that. Yeah, I think that I think that's just a stopgap measure because of all the restrictions and the difficulty of bringing people to the office. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why, like I go back, that the township concept is optimal. I mean, we joke now that you know, living in a township, live work place, like you did, you have been working now from where you live, no. We're working from home, but that's the that's the internal joke. But really, you know, the work from home is, you know, uh, you can address that further in a township level because you know you can create a bubble between your home and your and your office, and it's just very easy to get to the office uh, because you don't have to commute, you don't have to expose yourself, right? Um, so, but yeah, in my in my in my uh, opinion, I think work from home is temporary, especially for this sector. 
I, I'm sure a lot of people would want to know this because there's already like four reads that are that that will at, by the time we're putting this video uh, that will be out in the next in in this in this time frame. Uh, what makes mm-hmm. M read special uh, um, in this particular for this particular listing? Again, when you invest in a in a read, it's like you invest in a property that you will purchase for yourself, right? Because effectively you're purchasing a property which you will yield that. So you have to look at location. Location, location, location. So you look at, um, you know, you, 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 our, our REIT is predominantly in Metro Manila. Okay. And half of our REIT is in Port Bonifacio uh, area. Uh, that alone is a very superior proposition. You know? um, we are very, you know, we're not kind of all over the place. You no, know, we're not outside Metro Manila. We're there. Now, with the exception of, Iloilo, but Iloilo again. That's within the Megaworld Township, and Iloilo as um, a city is 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 really now, you know, we're we're one hundred percent leased out, and we have a wait list of clients wanting to get in there. The infrastructure in Iloilo is, is top class. You know, they have good airport, good roads, uh, they have good schools as well, good good power supply. And those are all the, you know, you, you're basically ticking all the. The, the 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 checks and the boxes, no. Um, so that's 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 the, the, the quality of the the assets. No? Number two, is it's um, it's very focused. Okay, our assets are focused on BPOs and um, multinational companies. That makes up more than ninety percent of the 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 the, the, no, the 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 portfolio. The rest are auxiliary. Um, Clients like you know on the ground floor of the buildings there are some bunch of bank convenience store but those are all also serving and those are all serving the building no? but predominantly we're very focused it's not a mixed basket meaning we're not mixing things in there uh, um, so that's definitely uh, you know uh, what makes it also a very good uh, superior proposition also we are you know we are you know we're in the read the all our assets. Are 100% put in issue. We're not putting in parts of assets. No, we have a mixed use with a hotel. Uh, we didn't separate the hotel. We put the hotel in also, but what we did instead was because the hotel it's half hotel, half office. So we didn't want to split it up. We put the whole asset in, but we just assured because of, we we didn't want you to be exposed to the occupancy swings of the hotel. We assured the the, the income already for the hotel, and we took on all the expenses ourselves. Um, Okay, so we're giving you all that, and you have full ownership of the building. Okay, right. other REITs I know are not yet full ownership of the building. A lot of them uh, are, you know, they have this right of use, which means you're effectively just leasing the building as well, long term. So you don't really fully own it. In our case, you fully own all the assets that are being placed uh, in the REIT, or at least M REIT owns all the assets here in the in the in the portfolio as an investor it's very clear it's office reads right so any future injections it's on the office right um because we have a huge runway we only put in 16 percent of our portfolio here we still have a long way to go so we have a lot of room to putting in new office buildings no so we we won't be mixing it with other asset classes or asset types because that kind of i think in the long run that the product the read more volatile eh? uh, when you, you mix it up with different kinds when you start putting in you know other types of of, 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 of assets it should be pure play office reads no? um and then of course last but not the least no i just want to say that we have a strong commitment to the bpo sector uh we continue to expand this sector we were the first to get into the bpo space uh eastwood city being the first ever cyber park so we are the first and we continue to invest. Even during the pandemic, we were probably the only devel- one of the few developers who continue to build office buildings during the pandemic. That's why between last year and this year, we built maybe around 80,000 square meters uh, of office spaces. And as a company, we're also looking at the future. Why? Because we think that BPO sector is also going to be transformed um, and has to evolve. Um, into a higher sort of value to also uh, go up in that value chain um, and that's why we are also investing in the future and that's why a month ago we launched the Dr. Andrew Tan 
Data Institute with the De La Salle University. It's a partnership between Megaworld and De La Salle. So our, and we are building a campus in Makinli Hill. Uh, you know, this is the first of its kind. Uh, there are there, there is one other data science school, but it's mostly for you know masteral degrees. No, uh, this one is for under undergrad, masters, PhD, and um, you know we hope that through this we can um, we can uh, inspire action, uh, inspire movement, and and we help train the next generation of Filipino data science scientists because um, we believe that that's where the the BPO sector is going. Um, so we have a very long uh, outlook for the future when it comes to this sector. And we want to participate in transforming this sector also, in making it, making us really a hub in Asia no? uh, for data science and technology, which we believe is the future. Got it. And that's, that's interesting. I, I totally agree with that. I believe big data, AI, and everything attached to that, uh, that's where... Uh, ev- everything is headed over, over the next few years and I-, I think this is a good step to make the Philippines also competitive as well. Talking about the REITs and I'm sure a lot of people would want to at least uh, get insights on this. Uh, when when it gets listed, the difference between buying a property is there's not really any volatility when you buy a condo or you buy a house. Once it gets listed already, uh, there will be days that it's down, it would be in the red, which is normal when you enter uh, into something that's equity equity laced. Um, what what would be something that you would want to convey to investors or potential investors uh, on on days like that? Because every investor wants to make money, but they have to realize that there will be days that it, it will be bad. It will be down. When it comes to REITs, um, I I would advise investors not to look at the price, the stock, the price of the the, the REIT or the stock price, no. Um, because effectively, what you are there for is for the yield or for the dividends, right? So you know, a, a REIT would give you at least you know five percent uh, dividend, no. Um, so uh, upwards of that. So effectively, um, uh, how do you call this? Uh, that's what you should be focused on, you know. Um, the the, the 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 value the valuation of the stock uh, should be secondary for you okay um it's not like a regular stock where you know dividend yields right now are what i think you know averagely on an average what two two percent three percent and then you really try to make sure that you're, you're you you monitor closely the prices because you you try to make your money there no so i think it's a different game it's a different mindset when it comes to to reits um um, as long as it's a stable REIT, stable company uh, with you know solid track record, uh, good tenant base, good location, um, a long history in this business like us, no? uh, I think then you can be assured no matter what happens, uh, you know, some days might, the price might go up or down, but ultimately the price will go up because as you continue to grow the asset base, Naturally, that will resound to, right down to the to the to the stock price as well, and your income also continues to grow. So I think that it's uh, that that's that's how I think how you the mindset you should take when you look into REIT or buy into an REIT. I think our REITs are for people also like me that uh, ayaw namin mag customer service, ayaw namin marketing ng property namin. We we just yes. want it to be pa- uh, passive. Yeah. We don't want yes. the headache also of managing tenants. Uh, pag, I, w- I was talking about this offline, when you check the check, you will go back to be able yeah. to, uh, to fix all of those items. Uh, I, I think it, it takes the stress away and there's a large chunk of people who just want to focus on their job or their business and then just really treat uh, the asset as an asset that's silently there and passively also, not just growing, but giving uh, a return on a, on a, regular, on a regular basis. Um, That's right. what, what can people expect for your dividends? I'm not sure what can you disclose or or share into this, um, but um, any insights on that? Yeah, I think it's going to be competitive. Uh, you're looking at a four five percent uh, yield. Um, um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much in line with some of the better REITs, no, in the market, no? the, 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 the the top quality REITs. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, definitely, it's a much better position than other instruments i believe 
Yeah, I think if you're looking for a, 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 a REIT investment, um, I think the strength of the sponsor should be also considered. Um, Mega World is the market leader uh, in the office uh, segment, you know, uh, by far. Um, and uh, you know, you always want to put your investment in the market leader, right? Uh, I think that's that 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 that's that's uh, that is uh, the way your mindset should be. Uh, I believe, and um, you know, we again, as I said, you are not effectively just going into, you're not just investing in the office says that we put in. You're investing in our entire township. Uh, so effectively, this is a township REIT actually, um, and in a township that uh, thrives uh, around a, a very robust ecosystem, um, an ecosystem that. You know, create it is such a huge value proposition for people that live and work in that environment, and that environment is what I can tell you right now. That's what all office clients, I think, all office tenants are looking for. The 15-minute city, everyone wants to be in it. Okay, that's Isod City, McKinley Hill, Ilo Ilo, and we have a long way to go. We haven't, like you mentioned a while ago, we haven't even considered yet up now. Uh, we haven't considered other townships like in Mactan, for example, in, in, in Cebu. Um, those will come as well. Uh, those are coming in the, in the next few years. We want to wait for a certain amount of uh, population and occupancy and maturity to happen before we put it in. Because we only want to put in the best. Huh? That's why I can tell you right now, we're very careful in selecting which properties to go into this read. We don't just put it in whatever uh you know we can it's it's very carefully selected we only want the best um and that's what you're getting when you buy uh when you invest in an in emery is you're getting the best yeah so for those who want to know more about emery what i'll do is i'll put the link in the description below for their perspective so you can also do a deep dive so Please, guys, please take the time to also study because at the end of the day, it's your money, it's your responsibility. You have to know what you're getting into because that will give you the conviction also uh, to deploy capital as well. And uh, Kevin, I wanna I wanna end with these two questions, so, and I'm sure, sure this will add value to people. Um, if you are um, hypothetically speaking like a normal middle class Filipino right now, uh, what would be your approach in the midst of this pandemic? In order for you not just to save and pay the bills, but uh, what would you do for you to be able to have a comfortable life uh, even at the latter portions? I guess what I'm asking is what will be your strategy uh, to grow wealth if you're a middle-class Filipino? As your show has might, might have already been promoting the different investment in uh, investment instruments, no? if you put your money in the bank, you'll earn uh, you know small interest rate and stress rate lang now nowadays and you know if, uh, it you probably even lose money with inflation so that's not the way to go so if you were to invest it in uh, a stock of course you know you have to always monitor it make sure you 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 earn from the capital gains you put it into um a bond uh, if you put you buy a bond five year it's about 3.5 percent a year right? if you get a 10 year maybe a little bit better right um, but then you go put it into REIT, which is what I'm encouraging you to do. No, if it's just, you know, uh, a REIT can make you, you know, anywhere from four or five, even six percent, depending on which one you're talking about, who you're investing in. No, um, that's very stable as well. No, um, uh, but of course, for me, um, long, long, long term, to, um, I put it in property. No, um, you know, there are so many different kinds of properties. Um, you know, you can buy a condominium and then from different, also with different price range, like condominium, house and lot, depending for your budget, because everything now you can buy to amortization. I would leave a little bit of our, my income for that because I think every Filipino should own their own home. Mm. That's one thing. Okay. And, you know, property prices, they always go up. So on average, in Metro Manila, condominiums before the pandemic was growing at a KGAR of around eight to ten percent per annum. Certain years it would go up to six. I was told certain years it would go up to about nineteen, sixteen uh, percent even. So you know, 
the, you, if you own a property which you even live in, uh, you know in your mind that after uh, five, ten years, that the price will probably double already. You know? uh, um, and so I, you know, so that's one of the things. And no matter what your budget, whether it be a property in Metro Manila or a property outside Metro Manila, house and lot, you know, I think generally speaking, um, you know, property prices are the most resilient. Um, and, 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 and we are nowhere near a bubble because we have still so many people who need homes or who don't own their own homes, right? So, um, you know, and if you look at historically, that's really where, where the, the massive appreciation is. So I, I am a firm believer in putting some of that money in land or in property or condominiums or what. Um, and that and that for me is my probably my tip for for your viewers. Are you more of a house and lot type of person or a condo type of person? You know, like house and lots uh, outside Metro Manila, um, it's it also is growing, but a little bit less in terms of um, uh, every year. Probably it's about five percent per annum on growth. None, no. Um, condominiums in Metro Manila are, like I said, around um, eight to ten percent. Some of the higher end ones, maybe eleven, eleven percent. Um, you've seen them on the property prices, but right? we're talking, you know. Yet, and even during the pandemic, all these property prices they held their their ground. Huh? Uh, they had we didn't see significant drops in prices. If anything, it just maybe plateaued. But no, no, we were expecting drops in prices, and we were gonna try to, you know, if you keep a lot of investors were probably waiting to to, to gobble them up. But it, it doesn't happen, yeah. um, and so that's what you, that's what I'm saying. It's resilient. No? I wouldn't say that it's always going to be like that. Huh? Certain crises, talagang definitely, you know. But generally speaking, it's it's always an uptrend. If it goes down a little bit for one year, you just hold it and it, it'll go back up again. So I'm I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, between house and lot and condo, I think it's your preference. Preference your preference. I have no 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 preference, na man. Um, uh, Personally, no. Uh, I think both have their advantages. Condominiums tend to be closer to the, where the action is, and house and lots tend to be a little farther. I mean, it's up to you, no. <laughs> so it's up to your how your lifestyle is, no. But I think both asset uh, types are very, very resilient. To end this, um, any words of encouragement for people who um have been financially hit uh in this pandemic or who are having a hard time also, um. I guess their earnings or their sales were are not yet back to where it was before. Yeah, it's a tough time. Um, the uncertainty continues, no. Um, and the pandemic continues to rage, but I think the man there are certain signs of recovery already. Um, I think that this pandemic is it's pri- primarily a health crisis that uh, became also an economic crisis. But mind you. The, the economic part, I feel it's it's more of a suppression due to the restrictions that currently exist. No? Um, once you remove those restrictions, uh, I think there's going to be a huge rebound again. I've seen, we've seen, you can see this in the US, right? You can see this in Europe. Um, uh, industries that we were unthinkable last year, like travel, this year it's just, you know, they've just rebounded so fast already right, in the US. Or in these key markets, and I think that it's just a matter of time that we are that this happens here in uh, the Philippines as well. Uh, I think vaccinations are 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 making quite good progress. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, we've vaccinated what by this time, I don't know, more than 20 million people already, um, and counting. Um, more vaccines are coming in, so pretty soon we'll will hit either a population protection or herd immunity by September, October. And then by, you know, hopefully by Christmas, uh, it's going to be much, much better. And next year, of course, obviously, it's, you know, election year, it's always going to be a good year when it's an election year. So, <laughs> um, you know, so I think things are on their way up. I just hope that, you know, everyone, yeah, I just, you know, my message is just, I guess, to hang in there. Um, you know, uh, and just be, you know, just, 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 just ride this wave. It's we're almost there. We're almost there. I think the worst is, this has been over already. Um, and uh, despite the lockdowns, I think there's still a significant improvement in uh, the economy. So, 
yeah, just a just a short. Uh, we just have to hold on just a short while. <laughs> Got it. Well said. Thank you so much for your time, um, Kevin Tan, uh, President of Emreet and CEO of Alliance Global. So, uh, to everyone who's watching, I hope that this was something that was very insightful for all of you. If you guys have questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and we'll try to see on how we can uh, address those questions. But at the end of the day, I hope that uh, this helped you also um, it gave you further insight on not just our REITs as a whole but also M REIT as well so that um, it's very very important that when you invest into something that you are uh, coming in uh, knowing what you're getting into because that's what's going to help you also especially when there's a uh, volatility in the market so that's it for now this is Marvin Germo I hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon and God bless you all